right, today I'm going to be showing you how to do the clutch replacement on a GMC Sonoma. Um, the one I'm doing up particular on is going to be a 2003. It's going to be a 2.2, obviously, uh, manual transmission. Um, and I'm going to be showing you how to replace the slave cylinder. Might as well, I would recommend it to replace it while you're there. Um, I mean, since you're there, because you have to take down the tranny if you got to replace it again. Um, now, as for this video, I'm not going to be as very well detailed. Um, well, I will be detailed, um, but I'm just not going to be showing every single bit, like me taking off the bolts. I'm just going to show you what to do on it um, as I go through the through the job of this process. Now, when it comes down to the clutch and putting down the slave cylinder, I will go ahead and record that full process just so you that you are aware and that you don't have a a misalignment or something for this um, the job quotes for eight hours on this particular vehicle so just that you're aware of so it can be take a little bit longer or you could be faster on it depending on the tools that you have but we're gonna go ahead and start this video right after the intro and if you haven't already give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and then hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos and thanks for watching First things first, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the negative battery. I disconnected the negative and the positive just because just in case if the negative moves out the way and the, I don't short myself out. Um, these both are going to be 8 millimeters. So these are the side terminals. So you would use an 8 millimeter wrench. Socket you can fit in there, but it'll be a tight fit unless you're using this uh, mini stubby quarter inch ratchet. Then we're going to go ahead and take out our center console. There's going to be three bolts in total. Um, they're all, they're all three of them are going to be 10 millimeters. So there's going to be one up front. So basically the way how you're looking at the center console, um, right here, you would have like a little rubber boot and then right here where that hole is, that's where that would be. This was broken actually prior to me taking that one off. So that would be one. And then the set, other two. You would open up the glove compartment and then pull out the tray that's in here. So literally it'll lift right up. As for me, it did. Um, and then you would just take off those two 10 millimeter bolts. And then these are the nuts right here. So these are how they would look like. And you would just keep these right here. Uh, we need to take off the, there's going to be a few seven millimeter bolts that are right here. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is that we're going to make a small cut right here so that we can get to these couple bolts that are right here. The side ones we don't know, we don't need to do anything about. We can actually just pry these back and then probably maybe for this one you might need to cut just a tad bit. So if needed, we might we might need to take off our cut right here just so we can actually pry this back and get a little space. Now if you don't want to cut that, um, obviously you'd probably, I mean I'm pretty sure you can actually just get this off by going, um, by like prying down the carpet but you will actually be start tearing into it um, another thing is to either you can actually take off a lot of things right up here and pry the the carpet up but um, since the cover is gonna be right here it's really not gonna be that too much of a big deal on that All right, so basically um, I made about three cuts in total for the first one um, right here on the bottom of the shift there basically I made a three inch incision so three inch cut and then right here you can actually use just kind of your quarter inch ratchet so this one was almost about three inches so kind of pretty much stopped at the base right here that's where I stopped that and then the same thing for the second one um, that was about three inch. and so you'll make a three inch cut right here with the curve and then we'll be able to put pull this out now you actually do have to cut this if you are just because the screws are actually pretty tucked in back there. They actually go deeper. The ones back over here are, are actually pretty good. So once I pull this off, I'll show you where the screws are. All right, so when pulling out the shifter boot, obviously you are gonna need to cut out the carpet a little bit um, if you didn't wanna get it out without the carpet again. Um, so when you're pulling this guy back out, even though it feels like um, it's not wanting to come out, you need to dig up your hands from the front and pull out. It's just kinda sucked right in there um, and then at this pretty much at this point you'll have access and then here's the screw holes so you can kind of see this will be on the left side the back side 
the right side and then the front and um, those are all seven millimeters by the way and then when you slide out the boot um, it can slide out from the shifter so just like that um, it won't rip or anything then uh, make sure that you don't destroy this guy because this guy is irreplaceable um, all right so next thing we're gonna kind of go ahead and um, we're gonna go into the car and then we're gonna drain out the uh, tranny fluid um, you're gonna be using a 17 millimeter hex um, so right here so if you're gonna be reusing the um, the fluid put it in a good bucket this fluid is actually fairly new it doesn't look like it but it's actually pretty clean um, and then you'll go ahead and tighten back up the bolt on that and then just clean up your area because you don't want this stuff on you because it stinks. Then um, you're gonna need a, we're going to need to take off the center support bearing bolts. So there's going to be on the top one, those are going to be 15 millimeters. And then the one on the bottom right here, so when you look at it right there, those are going to be 18 millimeters. So you need to hold one bolt up on top and then you, you can spin the, the one on the bottom. So you're going to take off both of those bolts right there. Then um, you're going to go ahead and take off the the rear um, of the drive shaft. So there's going to be four eight, uh, 11 millimeter bolts. So you just take these guys off. Now if the drive shaft is spinning, um, just go ahead and put the emergency brake on or put it in gear so that it doesn't spin. And if you can't reach the ones on top, then you can spin them um, like let's say if you can't reach the ones on top you just make sure that both wheels are up in the air rotate the wheels and um, the drive shaft will rotate rotate with it as long as the emergency brakes not on and the car is not in gear so but I was actually able to get all four bolts off um, just from the top and the bottom just like that and again it's 11 11 millimeters um, doesn't matter which way it goes in um, you don't need to balance it so but you should mark it though just in case it doesn't hurt and then once you get these guys off you're gonna go ahead and put a, a pry bar in between right here and just pry this out work your way back and forth so you can pop this guy right out put some penetrating oil on that all right so once you get um everything off the drive shaft basically we're just going to go ahead and pull this back this should slide right out pretty easy so again you'll just support right here at one end and then support right here at the other end make sure that um you don't mess up the 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 u-joints on the drive shaft that would be these guys right here um just for the one at the end so those those caps don't fall off all right, so next thing what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and take off the exhaust, um, the downpipe. Now basically there's gonna be three 13 millimeter bolts. There's gonna be two on this side and then one on the opposite side. Now you are able to get to it without any flex heads or anything. Um, basically I got it with just this. Obviously make sure that the 13 is gonna be a six point and not a 12 point because you will most likely strip out the bolt if it is a 12 point just because it's on the exhaust manifold. Um, so obviously I have one nine inch and then one six inch. So make sure you have those and you'll get a, a good on length. And then for this one too, it's going to be the same size. Um, obviously 13 millimeter. So you got one right here, one right up there. And then the one right here is a little bit tight uh, spot. You can either use a wrench or you can actually use a socket with the wrench. So as I was taking off this, um, basically I kind of just used one hand to pull back and it gave me enough leverage make sure that the socket is fully seated in right there and then um as well make sure you um hit every single bolt with penetrating oil i'm using the, the i use the pb blaster i let that sit for about 30 minutes and then you should be fine right after that soak it um once every five minutes in between as you're doing like other stuff so um so you keep it going and then also when you're taking out the, the downpipe, you can actually slide it right through here in the transmission. So you just wiggle that back and forth, just so that you're aware of that. Next so we gotta start taking off some of the things that are on the, on the rail, because we're actually gonna drop down the rear um, subframe. Uh, the one that holds in the tranny. Um, so we need to pop out this guy right here, so you can just pull this back, or you can either slide it out but we'll just pull it back it might break yeah, 
So yeah, just pull this back, just lift it like that. It's gonna break. Um, unless you wanted to slide it right out. So we'll have that out the way. Um, then we're gonna need to, right here, there's this little piece. You can use a pick to pry in between right here. The pick that I'm gonna be using is gonna be this one. You can actually get these from Harbor Freight. So you just pick in right between here and just twist out. And then this line will come out just like that. So we'll do that for this. And then for these guys, um, just get those out of the, the groove right here. So just push them right out. Just like that and same thing for the other one you'll just kind of put one thumb on the on the hose and then the other, your other finger right there while pushing back then we're going to go ahead and disconnect the wire harness from the transmission um there's going to be one little bracket right here so obviously you're going to have this hose right here now you can either disconnect it um like the other ones that i that i showed you how or you can press in between these two tabs right here so you'll squeeze those out and then you'll just pull them out the way and then right here there's that eight millimeter so we got to take that guy out and then we're gonna take off this sensor right here now you can use that pick if it's kind of stubborn you just pull back the tab just like that and just wiggle them right out and then we'll take off that eight millimeter that's right there. And then we'll take off this eight millimeter that's right here. So we'll take off those two. And then before we take off the, the rear subframe, um, we need to take off these two 13 millimeters first so we don't bend it just in case if it drops. And then we're gonna take off it's gonna be one, this is one 13 millimeter. Um, these are gonna be 15s. So when you take off these two bottom ones, um, you're gonna to need to put a wrench right up on top. That's 15 as well, just to hold that in place while you're taking off these two. This one you don't, like you just take right off. Now the bolt that's um, to the rear transmission mount, that's gonna be a 15 millimeter, just take that off. And then we got four 13 millimeters. You got one, two, and then on the same side, or on the opposite side, you got three and four. So we'll go ahead and take those off. Um, before you drop down the subframe, I meant um, just take off the um, exhaust flanges. Now you can either spray these with some WD-40 just to make them slide out, or you can just pop them out dry too. So you're gonna pop out this one, and then the, the one right over here on this side. You could just pop out the top one or the or the bottom, doesn't matter. Um, and if they're still on there too tight, you can actually get some pliers and then get one end right here and then the other end on the on the nipple and then just kind of just pry right back. But with the WD-40, would um, would uh, make it slide out pretty easy. So now that we're ready to drop down the transmission um, subframe, make sure that you support the, the transmission just so as we have support so that it doesn't tilt back. So when taking off these four bolts, um, so there's gonna be four, there are 13 on this side and then on the other side you need to hold them. There's gonna be four holes. So right here, you're gonna have to put a 15 millimeter just to hold those bolts in place. As you can see, where is it? So just only two that you can actually access. And then the other two, Oh, so right here on this side, there's going to be 15 millimeter. So you got to hold those in while you're taking off the other bolts. When you're taking off these bolts, it's going to be 15 on the bottom and then 13 on the top. So when you're taking off the subframe, you're going to push this side um, towards that way. while kind of holding this place like this side in place. And then you need to make sure you tilt out the, the bottom out for the transmission mount. All right, so now that we got the transmission lowered, um, I put a glove right here so it kept the fluid from leaking. Um, whatever like little remaining that's sitting in the seal. Um, right here, there's gonna be four eight millimeter bolts. Um, now there's either way, two ways you can either do this. You can either drill through the, the boot itself or you can take it out the way how it should be because in the Mitchell on the man, 
it says that you're able to take it out without taking this guy off but I mean I don't see any way of doing that without either destroying this so I don't want to destroy this just to keep any air noise coming in and out so we're just gonna go ahead and keep this intact because this is a discontinued part so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of lower your jack and then you're gonna get it down pretty low enough um, to where it stops going down and then you're just gonna pull on it so where it just finally goes all the way down bottoms out to where it can't go down anymore and then you'll be able to take off those bolts All right, so once you get all four bolts out, you can go ahead and just lift this right up. And then you'll be golden like that. And then we can be able to release the transmission from there. Um, so as it's coming down and all that, so um, I think we can actually just take it out of the boot. So yeah, we'll go ahead and remove that just to get it out the way. Um, just so we have some some clearance so we'll go ahead and take that out the way from there so this is what I did so I just squeezed these and I just pushed them right out so it's not in the way anymore and then we'll have access to everything on there make sure nothing's attached so we don't want nothing coming out along with it so we don't want to damage anything um, but I think that's pretty much it and uh, we'll go ahead and take off the main bolts and we're ready to drop down the tranny Alright, so now we need to disconnect the clutch line. Um, obviously, you're going to lose some fluid when doing this. So right here, there's this little plastic piece right there. That you need to push in all the way just so we can get this guy out. And then this should just pop right out after you get in everything. Let's see. There we have it. So once you get it all out, now the fluid shouldn't be leaking from this. It's only just going to be leaking from the slave cylinder. So once you get that going, uh, what you can do is. You can either spray some brake cleaner inside there so you can fully seat in. Usually you can push these in by hands, but knowing my luck, how to use the flathead screwdriver. So then we'll just go ahead and tuck this away. Right here. So I have that sitting right there, just with this line, um, so it's not in the way. And then. We're gonna go ahead and take off the 17 millimeter bolts. Um, we don't need to take off the starter. Um, um, they said on Mitchell on Demand that that's not needed. So I don't think that's gonna be in the way. If it is, then um, I'll let you know on that part. So there's gonna be bolts total. Obviously the one that's holding the transmission. I already took off the 13 millimeter bolts that are holding those in. And then um, there's gonna be 117, two, there's the second one, and then there's one right up there. That will be the third one. And then on the passenger side, there's the fifth one. And then there's one more, like right there on the top right corner. You can see it right there. Get that to focus. So yeah, that one right over there. So we'll take off those five 17 millimeter bolts and then the tranny should be able to pop right out. All right, so for the two top bolts, um, I'm, I forgot to mention um, all the bolts are 18 millimeter, not 17. Um, sorry about the misconfusion. Um, so I use the flex head. Uh, the ones that I'm using are actually Matco. Um, if not, you could probably use like a, a stubby 18 millimeter. Make sure it's six point, and then you can use like a little flex with it. Um, and then obviously, um, use probably about. 
Oh, is it nine nine? That's eighteen, and then six. So about a good twenty four inches. Um, yeah, I think that that's that's plenty enough. Um, just for that. Um, on that, and then the rest of the bolts will be easier to take off. So just only those two top ones, just for that, and then the other ones will go ahead and pop off. Um, I don't have the tranny jack right here, just because. Um, the motor still, uh, the transmission is still bolted, but I'm going to go ahead and put down the, the jack and then I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I might show that part as I'm pulling out the transmission. So just in that, that's just going to be a fast forward type of thing. And then also we got to take off these 10 millimeter bolts. Oh, didn't see those. It's going to be one, two, and then three, four. I think that should be about it and then it should drop all right so now we're gonna be able to pop out the tranny so just be careful that it doesn't tip over or anything so the rest of this is just gonna be a fast forward All right, so now we need to take off our um, our slave cylinder, and obviously here's a release bearing. So this is all one assembly. Um, now this is going to be two 10 millimeters holding this guy in. So you got one right here, and then one on the bottom right there. So you got those two. So we'll take that off. And then this should just slide right out. Now this one's bad. The way how you can tell, you can spin this around. And you can hear it make noise. It's not supposed to make noise. And then the seal right here. I believe there was a seal or no seal. Um, but it's making noise, so obviously the bearings are dry. And that's bad. So we're going to go ahead and replace that. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean all of this up. So... Make sure all the transmission is nice and clean. If you are going to pressure wash it, try to get a glove, cover this, cover that hole. Um, put some tape around your two connectors, and that should be it. But I'm going to go ahead and clean this all up, and then I'll get right back to this. Next, we're going to go ahead and take off the, the pressure plate, and then the, um, the clutch disc itself, and then we'll be taking off the flywheel. I don't know the bolt size for the flywheel, but um, basically for the the pressure disc those are going to be 14 millimeters so you're just going to take off all of those if you don't have an impact gun you can actually put like a flathead screwdriver right here where the starter is at and then pry in between that and you know just hold it right here just like that just to keep it from spinning so now next we're going to go ahead and take off these bolts these are going to be 17 millimeters um, again if you want to lock the flywheel you can do that Now once you get off the bolts, this should slide. Right off. Well it should slide right off, but slipped right off. <laughs> um, Alright, so now's a good time. If you need to inspect anything, if you have this guy leaking, um, just go ahead and um, silicone that sucker. Just pop off these 10 millimeter bolts. Um, this one doesn't seem like it's leaking, so obviously we don't need to replace that. The Rear main seal, obviously, if you're there, you might as well replace that. But this is good. That one doesn't need to be replaced. On just this end, it's just only the oil pan that's leaking. So, But that's not the case for that. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, now, you can go ahead and replace this guy right here. If it's pretty worn out. Um, I think we can go ahead and... I think we're just going to leave that guy in there that one looks perfectly fine so I'm gonna leave that one in there because that one doesn't yeah that one looks good so I don't need to replace this 
Um, if you did need to replace it, what you can do is you could put like a, a 3 8 extension and put bread. And then you can keep beating the bread inside and packing it. And then I, that'll push out this guy. And then when you go ahead and press this right back in, you will hit it with a piece of wood until it fully seats down. And then you would kind of use like the back of a, like the, like probably like a socket or something that will fit right here. I think probably maybe like 14 will work. So you would probably use like a 15. So yeah, 15 will seat right in there and then you'll just tap it in just a tad bit and then you'll just be in like a hairline in. So you just need to be sitting a little bit, tad bit flush right on there. Um, but yeah, there's that for that. So also um, for the part number for this one, um, the one that I'm using is from AutoZone. Um, Part number 50 or 50 6500 replaces only flywheels with a casting number of 140, 187, 12. So basically, the way where you can find that casting number is on the, the, the inside, the one that faces towards the crankshaft. So obviously, there's this one that will be going towards the transmission. That's where, where the pressure plate would go on. And um, the, the casting number will be right there. So this goes for this flywheel. So we would be good with that. Um, now this flywheel only goes in one direction, so you can't you can't mix it up. So it has to be in one specific order. So make sure that your bolts are clean um, because the Mitchell on Demand is actually recommending that you put on um, some Loctite. So the ones I'm going to be putting on is red Loctite. So we'll just kind of put in a dab like this. You can put them on like a rag or something. So you'll just kind of put them on the, the beginning and then that's pretty much it and then we're gonna go ahead and put on the flywheel so remember um, the flywheel goes in one direction so there's one with three holes that are together and so we need to put that right there and so you see right there with the three holes now before putting this guy on all the way don't forget about the plate that's gonna go right here. So we'll set that guy right in. So make sure. And once we get those holes aligned, then we can start threading in our bolts. So we need to clean our area with brake cleaner just because if you touch it with your hands we don't want no grease right here because we don't want that slipping. So make sure you clean all this area. I sprayed brake cleaner on the rack. So the inside doesn't matter, but if you wanted it to, you can spray it. Oh, again, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on our pressure plate. Now you can actually put this in two ways. So I don't want you guys to get confused. The one with the completely flat surface, you see how on the bottom right here, that's the top hat. The top hat needs to face towards the transmission and the flat surface needs to go towards the flywheel. So again, remember the flat surface is going to go towards the tra uh, the motor and then the flat the top hat is going to be going towards the transmission. Now, once you got your key set it in, this key should be coming in with the clutch on disc. And then here's our pressure plate right here. Now, I think there's pretty much no right or wrong on this. Um, I don't think there's sense of direction that you can put this in um, let's see and don't forget we got to put red loctite on our bolts 
I would use blue, but I only have red at the moment. So I'm gonna try to, I can't get mostly everything that both bolts, but there's one bolt right here. So just remember that. And then there's one bolt right up here. So we're gonna kind of do this like in a, in a cross pattern. So one bolt right here, this is the next one. And then we'll go right over to this one, then this one, then that one, and then this one right over there. So when I'm doing that, I'm just gonna tighten these with my electric gun, but I'm gonna hold this guy straight forward, flat in, and then I'm gonna hold this pressure plate with my hand as well. And so once the pressure plate starts building a little, like it starts tightening down the plate, you're gonna go on the opposite side because you don't want it to all torque down on one spec or on one side. So we got it right there. And then you'll go back and forth. And then we'll work our way. All right, so now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and torque these bolts down to 29 foot-pounds. That's what Mitchell On Demand's going by. Um, I believe it's for the NV-1500, 29 foot-pounds. And then for the NV-3500, I believe that's the V6. Um, it was saying like it was like torqued down to like 35 foot-pounds, but um, you need to go by your own specs depending on what transmission it is. So I'm gonna go by this one on 29 foot-pounds. So we got that all torqued down. So we'll go ahead and pull up the pin. Should slide out nice and easy. If it doesn't, then obviously you got some restriction going on. Um, also, I forgot to mention, there's actually six bolts for the transmission. Um, just so you know, there's this bolt right here. Um, basically, you're gonna need another 18 millimeter that's holding this on the side. Um, so that's gonna be a bolt and a nut. And then you'll just hold down the nut on this side and you'll be able to loosen that. And then there's two ground wires that are right there. Just so, or three, I'm sorry, three ground wires that are right there. Um, just kind of mention that right now, just those little details. Set that aside. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and um, put on our, um, the release bearing. So you need to make sure that your surface is pretty clean. I clean up the whole area. Um, so the one I got is a pretty updated version. So at least this one, so when we, when we bleed this guy out, this is sticking out of the transmission, just like that. And so the fluid is not leaking inside. So we got new bolts with this. And then we'll just go ahead and thread those in. I believe you guys would torque these down to 12 foot pounds or something. Uh, don't go by my word. Find. You need to check up on yourself on that. So make sure that's fully seated in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and sit this down fully. So this sucker's not gonna go anywhere. So make sure you have no play. This guy's will have play right here. We'll have play. Just make sure that this plate does not move. Um, now as for this, we need to lubricate this guy right here. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Do not lubricate the bearing at all. Do not lubricate this surface at all. Alright, so when we're putting on this guy, make sure that this surface is clean and there's no debris in here. So we're going to go ahead and put this guy. Um, obviously this whole uh, the spleen lubricant, this is all you're going to need. You don't need to go out all out because if you do, 
guess what? You're going to be having some some issues. So you, you can, whatever you put in there, you want to make sure all your spleens are, are lubricated because obviously we don't want no issues. And then you'll just run your, your fingernail through here. Literally a little lubrication goes a long ways. Now you can't be too stingy with it. If you are too stingy with it, You're gonna screw yourself over too. You'll have some noise. In there. So once you get everything through all the splines and all that, you can just kind of run a little bit. Inside! Oh, run away! Just right there in the beginning. It went down on Laura's house. I mean, Charlie went down on uh -huh. Laura's house, and then, and then, and then, like, hey, I was smelling. She's waving to her. And then you'll smelling. put a very thin coat right here. Just barely, barely, I mean like a thin coat, just just like that. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and slap on the transmission. We're gonna go ahead and put in the transmission. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it right in. Um, now, if you lift it on the jack, obviously you don't have to worry about it, but since I took it off the jack, I'm just gonna kind of slide it right in. So you'll go ahead and see that. Transmission's not that heavy, so it's able to actually slide right away All right, just kind of want to update you. It's actually the next day. Yesterday, my phone died, or was getting low on voltage, um, or battery. So um, basically, the way how I was getting in the transmission is uh, I actually pulled down the motor, so I grabbed it from the starter, from right up here on the top where the solenoid's at, and I pulled down just a tad bit, and the motor came down a little bit. Um, and then I was able to bring in the transmission a little bit. Now it was pushing against one of the um, on the pressure plate, like one of the, where the uh, clutch release bearings actually sits on, it was actually sitting on that. So um, I had to lift up the the transmission from up here and kind of bring down the, the rear housing a little bit to kind of angle it up. Um, but then at the same time, um, at the top was kind of um, hitting against the, the, the transmission tunnel so um but i was able to manage to get it so i'm just kind of updating on that part and then we're just gonna go ahead and finish the remaining on that as i'm putting in the transmission i'm kind of working it and also by the way the transmission is in neutral um i think it's actually recommended to have it um in third or fourth gear that's what it was saying on mitchell but i usually kind of put them in in neutral 
if I do have an issue, then I'll, I'll throw it in, in gear. But as of right now, everything's going in pretty smooth. So we got the bolt on the driver side um, bolted down. Now we need to just do the passenger side. All right, so when putting up these bolts, um, I think I would recommend to put in this guy first, um, just because it's it's a lot more easier and so that the alignment's not off. Now make sure that your jack's still holding up because um, even though you have one bolt, because your alignment pins, there's one up on top and then the other one's right here, right behind the starter. So where this bolt is at, right here, right there. So that's where that alignment pin is. Um, so if you start off that one, um, and then the other one is loose, I'll just put in those two side ones in first. So if you keep that one loose, don't tighten it down all the way, and then you can actually lift up right here on the back of the housing with your knee um, or your hand, and then just start a like start a good thread right there. Make sure that. Um, that's fully seated in or you can actually use your jack just right there um, using my knees actually makes it more easier to set in and I mean so I'm not over here sitting all like crazy and trying to figure out what to do but um, after you get um, after you get these bolts in um, so this will be kind of this will be pretty loose um, it's, it is loose so as you can see right there I can spin it so and then once you tighten down that bolt that's gonna let you know everything's pretty much almost aligned. Um, and then run your hand up on top. Make sure that none of the wires are in the way because a lot of people do end up getting those wires pinched. Make sure you have three of your ground cables that are, are in because if not, you're gonna be having an issue. Um, and then yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put up the, the bolts right now um, for the remaining transmission bolts. So I was having an issue with the plate. Um, being set up so I loosen up the starter those bolts are 15 millimeters so you just take them off and then um, so you can have some some play with the with the starter one bolts gonna be longer than the other and the other one's gonna be short so we'll have this guy loose in the time being so once we get the transmission fully bolted in then we'll go ahead and bolt this guy down with that all right so we got the starter back in we put on the plates um for the starter i just snug those in in the beginning and then i put down the plates and then i tighten the starter bolts um for these guys i'm gonna leave last i'm not gonna really worry about those um just in case if i have any issues if i gotta pull down the tranny um the next thing we're gonna go ahead and put down the strut tower now you can either replace a seal or you can reuse it um the seal on this one is seems pretty fine so make sure you don't have the transmission jacked up Make sure you still have it lowered so you can sneak in the boot. So when putting in back the shift boot, I fed it from up top while squeezing these guys down. And then um, when you're gonna go back under, basically you're gonna guide this guy. Let me get that flash in there. So right there, that black, you need to make sure that goes inside this metal pipe. And then you can go ahead and sit this back in and then we're gonna go ahead and thread in those eight millimeter bolts. All right, so um, right now at this point, we already got this um, harness connected. We got the bolts. So this was kind of how this piece will look like. Make sure that it's sitting like that. And then for the inner um, fuel lines, this will sit right behind that. That will be bolted down. And then we'll connect these guys, get those bolted in. And um, that's pretty much it. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the the lower transmission um, subframe. Alright, so we got in the transmission in support. Um, so if you're having a hard time aligning the transmission mount, what you can do is get a flathead screwdriver or a pry bar or something. And um, have, you can um, have the, the jack under this while lifting it. And then, so once you get this guy... While it's on top, you kind of pry it, 
and then you can use the edge of right here of the the flathead I use the flathead screwdriver so you kind of use that and then once I started um, the initial start of the thread then I just went ahead and took out the flathead screwdriver and then just lower the the jack stand um, put back on these guys and then uh, we'll put back on this guy right here so that's for the O2 sensor um, then I went ahead and put in the the drive shaft now the drive shaft can only go in one way um, there's no other way it can go in so if it's not going in just keep rotating the drive shaft until it locks in if um, if it's still not going in obviously you have the car in neutral and it's probably spinning the spline so you need to put it in gear so that it doesn't spin and um, yeah we're gonna go ahead and connect the the u-joints and then we're gonna put on the exhaust and then we're gonna go ahead and put the fluid so when taking off the fill plug for the transmission, it's going to be a 17 millimeter Allen's. So right here, we're looking on the driver's side, there's going to be a fill plug. And so we're just going to keep loosening it until it comes off. And then we can go ahead and fill it up right back in there. Um, you can use like a, I mean whatever the bottles give you or you can put like a hose right here and then make sure it's a pretty long hose and then have it kind of like sitting above the car a little bit so you can kind of like gravity feed it or you can come up from up top from right over there and then you can feed it from the engine bay. Um, in my case I'm just going to feed it from right here because I have the tool for that. So once you put in your fluid, the way how you can tell it's full, um, you need to make sure that the transmission is fully leveled. Mine's tilted as you can see, so from right there and right there it's tilted. Yeah, those few degrees does make a big difference. So um, I basically put back the fluid that actually came out of it. Obviously a little bit extra um, came out when dropping down the transmission. So what you can do is you can get a rag and we'll clean up our area. So this is for my sake if you want to see how how much fluids in there so what you'll go ahead and do is you'll clean up the the fill plug area make sure it's all nice and clean and you see how my my pinkies all dried up so what we're gonna go ahead and do is that we're gonna just kind of use our pinky as a level finger so basically once you get your pinky in you're just gonna kind of dig it down and um, basically make sure if if you're full or not you can um your your pinky would be wet so that's how you'll know when you're full so i'm full um like i said i just put back what came out and uh we're pretty much ready to go on that so we're gonna go ahead and put on the fill plug um you don't need to put any teflon tape it should go in so it's kind of like a little tapered so as you tighten it um it'll it'll seal itself so it's almost like a plumbing fitting so um same thing for the bottom you don't need to put teflon tape so don't be doing all that stuff and the next um we're going to be going ahead and bleeding out the slave cylinder um with the new uh slave kit um we got a new o-ring and then we got a new quick release and that in that process um when this is prior before me even getting the clutch um it actually with the new clutch kit actually comes with the tool so you can actually release that um basically you would kind of slide that right in so you can actually quick disconnect that from the slave cylinder so just thought i might have thrown that out there for you guys um and then yeah um basically how you would bleed the clutch is that you would pump up the clutch pedal you don't need the engine running obviously so you would pump punch uh press the clutch pedal three times um and hold it and then um right here i think it's either 10 millimeter or 11 millimeter um you, i would use a wrench uh, just because you need it to shoot somewhere um if not you can put like a rag or something or you can let it go and well just use a wrench because you don't want it going back inside the transmission because we have that sucker all clean um for the first initial one you want to keep pumping it till i would say about 15 times until everything gets nice and hard about 15 times up and down don't do it fast do it nice and like medium slow not like super slow but like i said like a medium slow pace and then um at the 50 time press and hold it do not let go of the clutch pedal when you're holding down the clutch pedal and then go ahead and release the fluid from here 
and then while still pressing and holding the clutch pedal once all like a little air comes out then close this back up and then go ahead and pump the pedal again until it starts getting a little bit firm and then repeat this the process of of that so um do not let go of the clutch pedal when this guy's open because you will put back air in the system and then keep an eye on the reservoir so right here is the reservoir um you'd be using dot three it's brake fluid um so right there as you can see dot three brake fluid um you just pop open this cap obviously this sucker is dirty so we're going to be flushing all of that out what you can do is uh siphon all of this out first and then go ahead and flush out the whole system so we're going to go ahead and do that and um, yeah, um, all right. So when bleeding the clutch, um, I guess the procedure is um, it's a pain in the butt. Let me tell you. Uh, make sure that you don't get any air in the system because if you do, it will be difficult to bleed out. I mean, not difficult. It will take longer. Trust me. Um, it'll literally turn a five minute job into a 30 minute job. Um, so basically the initial start, once you get in the, um, everything all together and you're going to bleed it out before you bleed it out, make sure that you pump the clutch pedal about for 30 seconds, pretty fast, rapid until it starts getting firm. And after that 30 seconds, just press and hold, release the fluid. Um, now, um, you're going to do this once every two times so at the second time you um you release the fluid the 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 bleeder screw you're gonna add fluid because obviously uh, like at three obviously it's gonna empty right out after every three flushes um it will empty right out now just so you're very aware of this as soon as you get air in the system you're screwing yourself right over i just want you to be aware of that um my mistake will be your your um as you can say My mistake will be your success. Um, I just want you to know that. So I got air in the system. Like I said, it took me 30 minutes just to do the whole flush because there was so much air and the pedal was, was getting, slowly getting harder. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Do not get air in the system. Um, again, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and then hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future. And thanks for watching.